Welcome to the Nomadics webinar on multi-WAN and load balancing with the Nomadics Gateway in the 8.2 release of our software. We will first discuss multi-WAN. There have been some configuration changes for the multi-WAN interface so that we can support the new features as we have implemented them. The major change is each interface, each Ethernet port, is now separately configurable. It can either be the WAN link, the subscriber link, or out of service. If it is the WAN link, this would be the link that would connect to an ISP and allow for a separate internet connection for any of the Ethernet ports. The subscriber side would be where you would connect your guest network, and out of service means that that interface is not utilized at all. Each WAN interface has its own IP, DNS, bandwidth, VLAN, and NAT IP addresses that are configurable specific to that interface. Each WAN interface can obtain its IP address by DHCP, PPPoE, or it can be statically configured to match the settings on, from the ISP for that WAN. As you can see on this example of an AG5800, there are six Ethernet ports and all six of them can be separately configured as either WAN ports, out of service ports, or subscriber ports. On the AG5600, there are only four ports that can be configured. On the AG24, there are only four ports as well. So the maximum ports you can get is on the AG5800 with six ports. On the interface configuration, you first select the role that you want that interface to have. That role is going to be either the WAN interface, the subscriber interface, or out of service. If you select the subscriber interface or out of service, then you will have no other configurations to administer. If you select the WAN interface, then you need to determine which configuration mode, BBPoE, DHCP, or static, and then you will configure the rest of the settings based on that configuration mode. In the example here, we have a static configuration mode, so we need to enter the IP address, the subnet mask, the gateway, the DNS domain, the DNS servers, the uplink and downlink bandwidth settings, the WAN 802.1Q tagging if you're using VLAN on that WAN interface, and any multiple NAT IP addresses for this WAN. We will now get into the load balancing settings. In the Nomadics load balancing, it is a licensed module, which means you need to purchase an additional module to have access to failover and load balancing while well, multi-WAN is available without this additional module. The Nomadics implementation of load balancing and link failover. In load balancing we have implemented the link aggregation so that the multiple WAN interfaces combine their bandwidth settings to have the total pipe for the network. There is a limitation here however that each user will not be able to get more bandwidth than the WAN interface he is running across. For link failover, we have set up so that multiple links on a load balance or even just a link failover will utilize their bandwidth to run the users. And if a link fails for whatever reason, all those users that were using that link would be moved over to a link that is still up. Once that original link that had failed comes back up, the system will rebalance the users across all available links. We use user-based balancing between the WAN for load balancing. So each user will be assigned a specific WAN interface that all its traffic runs over. So if the link fails, then they'd move to a different WAN. All the load balancing is weighted based on the bandwidth settings of the individual WAN interfaces. So if you have one WAN interface that has twice as much bandwidth as another inter WAN interface, that original WAN interface with the twice as much bandwidth will have also twice as many users as the other WAN interface that only has half as much bandwidth. This will allow most users to have a even amount of bandwidth and all have a good user experience. We do interface monitoring to support the WAN failover for the load balancing and failover. It can be implemented either using a DNS query to the DNS settings of that WAN interface or doing a host probe, either a ping or an HTTP request to the configured host. 
It can also be defined to utilize the hardware link status of the WAN interfaces for interface monitoring. You also have the ability with RADIUS VSA to assign a specific user to a specific WAN interface so that you can assign users to a premium WAN interface for larger bandwidth and you can do your own load balancing of users instead of the automatic load balancing that is based on the weighting of the bandwidth settings in the WAN interfaces. So utilizing the RADIUS VSA you could have some of your users go to the larger bandwidth link and other users go to your lower bandwidth link based on your identification of those specific users. If you want to know more about the RADIUS VSAs, please contact our technical support department who would be happy to help you with those features. Load balancing and failover configuration. If you have the load balancing and failover module, you will be able to set either load balancing between all WAN interfaces or failover of the WAN interfaces in order. Once you determine which you are setting of load balancing, failover, or then you will also need to determine the link availability criteria, whether you utilize the interface mon monitor or whether you utilize the hardware link status. If you are using the interface monitor, then you will need to configure that as well. To configure the interface monitoring, each WAN has its own configuration to monitor each individual WAN. Once you select which WAN you are going to set up, you will select how it monitors. The automatic monitoring method is a periodic DNS query to the DNS server set in that WAN. The host probing setting would either probe it with a ping or an HTTP request to the configured host in the settings. Now we will go over some example configurations of load balancing and multi-WAN. If you have multiple ISP links for your load balancing, your example would look similar to this. In this case, using the AG5800, we have five different ISP connections using two megabits each connection. The sixth interface is a subscriber interface connecting to the guests. So in this example, there are, is a total of 10 megabits to share between all the guests because of all the different ISP links. But again, one guest would not be able to get more than the 2 meg link that the WAN interface it is running over grants it. If we are utilizing failover between two different ISPs, in this example we have a main ISP circuit of 100 meg Ethernet and a backup circuit of 20 meg wireless. All the guest traffic would run over the main ISP circuit unless for some reason that link went down, based on the link mon or interface monitoring or link status depending on how the settings are set up. If that link fails then all the traffic would be moved over to the ISP2 and the users should not lose any of their internet access. Once that ISP1 comes back up then the users would move back over to that ISP continuing to have access to the internet without any interruption. You can also separate users based on their tier to the different ISP or WAN interfaces, utilizing the RADIUS VSA that we talked about earlier. You can have free users go to a slower ISP connection, whereas your premium users get access to a larger bandwidth ISP utilizing that RADIUS VSA. Thank you for listening to the Nomadics webinar on multi-WAN and load balancing with the Nomadics Gateway in the 8.2 release of our software. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact your sales engineer or Nomadics Technical Support to help you with our new features.